Okay, before we dive in, I just want to give you a quick overview of how these tutorials are sort of laid out and just give you a couple of tips on trying to use them. I thought long and hard about the best way to distribute these, and at the moment, uh, I'm believing that I'm going to distribute them sort of just as a package of QuickTime movies. This will give you the flexibility of watching them offline, and things like Udemy and different online portals that I found, the video quality was just pretty low. Now, because someone has a lot of text, I recorded these videos at fairly high resolution, 1440p, and um, I want to be able to distribute them at full resolution so that you can make them full screen or whatever. So let me just show you that you're probably going to be looking at a folder similar to this. Now, there are a couple of videos still missing, but I wanted to guide you through um, sort of the layout of this tutorial and, and some tips on using it. Now, I've divided the set of trails into chapters, sort of 1 through 15, and within that, some subchapters. And I've tried to group things together that I thought sort of belonged together. Now, they're not always this way perfectly, but let me just show you that um, chapter 00, zero will have a couple more videos, including the one that you're watching now, and this is just an introduction. The videos in chapter 1 are sort of a quick course, taking you through the really basic functions of SoundMiner, customizing it, a quick crash course on adding sounds, modifying some metadata, transferring to your DAW. For people who are new to SoundMiner, you'd want to start here. Then chapter 2 is all about records and columns and things like that, talking about the views and storing layouts, common metadata fields that I think will be useful for most people to get really familiar with. This is what you're working with constantly in SoundMiner. So this is where we go over topics like that. Chapter three in particular looks at the application support folder, which is a really important folder to understand. It's where all of your data is stored. And a mode called freelance mode, which has to do with where that folder is stored and um, two different ways of working that SoundMiner can sort of work. Chapter four is really about finding things and using the left and the right filter panels and summary panels and these different ways of sort of organizing your search results and searching for things via category and keywords and things like that. Um, most people will just go to the find and, you know, hit search term and that's maybe all they do. But there are a lot of things that affect what you're going to return when you do a find, modifying the search indexes, all these things. And this is all covered here. Chapter 5 really starts looking into relinking and embedding the metadata into the files, doing something called a live relink, and just walking you through all the functions of that, sort of how SoundMiner links and interacts with records, what happens when it goes wrong and you happen to lose things, and they, links break, things like that. Chapter 6 in particular looks at the waveform browser, a really crucial part of SoundMiner, then goes really thoroughly through how to spot sounds into your DAW and all the options that are available to you. Again. Most people are used to just hitting the S key potentially or the command B to put it in their bin. But there are actually a lot of preferences that can have effect on what happens when you do that. And this is where we walk through all of those. Now, chapters 7 and 8 really go through um, a lot of uh, other windows in some minor that do very specific functions. So things like meta tags and multi meta tags, the spell checker, the mirror function, composite audio files. Um, the spotting panel and tag to database. These are all additional windows that you can call up in SoundMiner to do very specific functions. And some of them are very powerful. And I think a lot of people don't even know that some of them are there. I'm certainly a lot of people I know aren't familiar with the mirror function, which is a very, very powerful function in SoundMiner and very, very useful. So I want to go over all of those things there. The spell checker is fairly new, but topics like that are sort of covered here. Windows that kind of operate on their own aside from the main SoundMiner interface are sort of covered in chapter seven and eight. Chapter 9 goes through all of the preferences basically available to you in SoundMiner. The first video covers all of the general preferences, of which there are quite a few, and explains what implications they have when you're working with SoundMiner. And then Chapter 9B covers the rest of the preferences in all the rest of the tabs. Chapter 10, likewise, goes through all of the menu options. Every single menu and pretty much every single item in those menus is covered here, starting with the Edit menu, then the Database menu, and then the rest of the menus. There are quite a few things hidden away in the menus that, again, people aren't necessarily aware of. Some of them I wasn't even aware of until I really dove in to do this tutorial. So they're all covered here. Now, chapter 11 is a long set of chapters, and this covers the idea of editing metadata, in particular, um, the workflows. The first video shows you all the different ways sort of to edit metadata aside from the workflows, and then the rest of the chapters or subchapters in chapter 11 really cover going through really in-depth the workflows feature in SoundMiner, which is one of the most powerful features there is if you're having to modify uh, or create metadata in SoundMiner. If you're a vendor sending out sound effects, this is a chapter you probably would want to watch. If you're a librarian or somebody organizing a big library, likewise, this will have a lot of very useful information for you. 
Now, chapter 13 covers quite a few various little topics that didn't seem to fit anywhere else. They're sort of one-off things. And there are things even to some degree that came up in the process of making these tutorials. New features were added. For example, open tier and auto-suggest and auto-complete are things that just sort of came about while I was working on this set of videos. And so they have their own little chapters just to go through some things like uh, explaining the process scripts, um, channel layout versus IXML track layout, which is something that confuses a lot of people, um, using metadata lookup from the cloud. So these are all really standalone little videos that just cover these specific topics that didn't really find a home somewhere else. One video in this list that's missing is chapter 12, which will be all about the VST or the DSP rack, which is a video that I have to make yet. That will be coming soon. It will be there by the time you see all of this. And that's a way to run plugins within SoundMiner. Chapter 14 covers the Universal Category Systems implementation within SoundMiner, explains what it is, shows you the various ways that you can use UCS in SoundMiner. For those who don't know, it's a category system that's freely available to anybody to use. SoundMiner was sort of the first company that I worked with to implement it, and Justin has implemented it in some really clever ways. So if you're in need of a category system or are interested in using UCS, this video will show you all the ways that it's implemented in SoundMiner. And lastly, chapter 15 covers a lot of updates, things that I either missed or got wrong. In some cases, the video that includes the user thesaurus, um, I simply made a mistake. I didn't think it was working. It actually is working. I just was misunderstanding how it's implemented. So this is a video that just covers a handful of updates to the other videos. So if you actually make it all the way through or if you're curious, have a look at that video. It just gives you some updates on some things and explains some things a little bit better. In the next video, I'll walk you through this folder of bonus files that I'm including as well and explain to you what all the files in there are. But let me just show you one thing. Let me just open one of these files really quickly in something like VLC, which is a free media player, just to show you a couple of things. Now it starts to play. Um, the first thing is that I've done my best to add subtitle tracks only in English. Um, but if you go to the subtitles track and turn on English, what we should see if we start jumping around, you'll see that there are subtitles. I will actually include the SRT subtitle tracks in the bonus folder and explain how it, you may be able to um, translate those into another language. A lot of programs can allow you to drop in an SRT file directly back into the media player. So, and I'll include a link to a web page that can translate them, but I have no idea what languages would need to be translated or anything like that. And I can't vouch for the accuracy of how that would work that uses Google Translate. But in the next video, I'll sort of show you how you might be able to use those. But just know that there are subtitles available if you want to turn them on. I've also done my best to go through, and in some of the videos, not all of them, but in videos that cover sort of a wide range of topics, to use um, chapter markers. And if I go, for example, in VLC to the chapter menu, and many media players will show you all of this, you'll see that there are a set of chapters that can jump you to various points in these videos. Since some of these videos are quite long, some of them are over an hour, um, if you sort of found yourself in a spot where you already know this and you want to jump ahead, you can jump to the next chapter or you can basically find something in particular here. So if I wanted to, in this crash course, uh, learn about transferring files to your DAW, I could just jump to that area. And when I hit play, there you go. So just know that there are chapter markers in, again, many of the videos. Now, if it's a short video and it covers really only one topic, I haven't made chapter markers. But I would say most of the videos actually have chapter markers in them in case that's useful to you. And you can see that even if I quit out of this, even in something like preview in the Macintosh, if I just highlight one of these and hit preview, you'll see that the chapter markers all start to appear here along the left-hand side. Now it doesn't give me the name of them, but I can simply jump anywhere. I can jump through the files that way and use the chapter markers if I want. So I did just want to sort of point out to you, this is how these tutorials are laid out. Again, each of these videos is designed to be relatively self-contained. If, if something comes up that I, you know, you really need to watch another video, I'll usually tell you, you know, go watch this video instead. But because I know that a lot of people who are already SoundMiner users and are going to have some familiarity with certain parts of this already, they may not want to watch every single one of these tutorial videos from beginning to end. So for that reason, some of these videos have a little redundancy in them. When I'm going through the menus, for example, things that I will already have talked about in another video may come up again and I'll just explain them again. I've tried to keep that to a minimum, but there definitely is a little bit of repetition in some of these videos, again, because I wanted to make these videos relatively self-contained. And so I think that's it. And I'll just say uh, one last thing, which is that um, I've decided to try to just publish this set of videos as a downloadable file, which makes it very easy to share. I know that there's a culture of sort of sharing things out there in the world, and I'll simply kindly ask you, um, 
not to share this with your friends, not to upload it anywhere. I can't prevent anybody from doing that. Um, but this video set has taken literally months of my life. I'll never ever come close to making my money back on the amount of time that I've spent on these videos. So I'm just asking you very nicely, please don't share the videos. Recommend them to your friends, absolutely. If you're working for a company or a school that's interested in having a site license of these, just reach out to me. I'm happy to work out some agreement. Um, I want these videos to be useful, but I'm hoping to make back a little of my time and money on these videos. And so that's why I've arranged them the way that I've done. So thank you for that. In the next video, let me just walk you through this folder of bonus files that um, I've prepared and explained to you what I've pulled together.